On a typical Friday night, I will drive home from school with a few friends. We'll eat, turn on Netflix, and talk late into the night. But on any given night, a girl may be getting ready to go work at a karaoke bar. She'll wait until a customer arrives and take him into a guest house and make her money for the night. The only thing I have in common with her is age, both 15. With an estimated 40 to 100,000 sex workers, the sex industry has exploded in Cambodia. It thrives in brothels, karaoke bars, massage parlors, and on streets like this one in front of the slum in Phnom Penh. We are a group of Harvard Westlake High School students who have come to Cambodia to experience its rich culture and to hear stories of its people following the genocide. We wanted to focus on Cambodia's ever-expanding sex industry, a prominent and prevalent aspect of the country's society. The main reason why the girls get into the sex trade in Cambodia is just for financial needs. They need to provide, they need to provide for their, their families. Brianne is the director for the nonprofit Daughters of Cambodia, which is dedicated to helping women exit the sex industry by giving them jobs and sustainable businesses. They have to wait for their salary till the end of the month, but instead they can go to the KTVs and maybe make more. They can make more, a lot of them can make more in the sex industry than they can working with us. So that's of course the temptation that could drive them back because they need more money. 40% of Cambodia's population earns less than $1.25 a day. In a country with the heavy burden of poverty, it is not uncommon for a family to sell their own young daughter into the sex industry. These are undercover photos taken at a gentleman's club outside of Siem Reap. This lady is the hostess. She's worked here for three years, but dreams of being a chef. Dreams that feel so far away to a single mom of two teenagers in a country without a lot of opportunity for women. The flourishing sex industry is a modern remnant of the years of corruption following the genocide 40 years ago. The trauma induced by the Khmer Rouge's brutality has inarguably left a deep scar on the lives of the Cambodian people. They beat you up psychologically, mentally, you know, and physically. Arnchorn Pond has dedicated his life to spreading music throughout Cambodia. As a survivor of the genocide, he can attest to the long-lasting impacts of the Khmer Rouge on a man's life. The prostitutes is, is, a, is a lucrative for somebody else, a lucrative business, but it, it's a degradation to young women and it, it's a growing business I am nervous about. But maybe the popularity of the sex industry hints at a deeper issue, an unjust double standard for men when it comes to the taboo topic of sex. Cambodia is a hierarchical society with men at the top. It is acceptable for a man to buy sex from other women while his wife is pregnant. It is a disgrace for a woman to lose her virginity before marriage. Society looks down upon girls that have lost their virginity before they're married. Um, and so because of that, they are looked upon as broken and unfixable. But definitely uh, women take a different role in the society than men do. And although prostitution is mainly targeted at Cambodians, American tourism is also contributing to the magnitude of the problem. Sites like wikisexguide.com have emerged providing what they call a thoughtful guide to finding illegal brothels, massage parlors, and street hookers in Cambodia. In broad daylight, these streets in Siem Reap are lined with carts selling fruits and soft drinks, but when the sun sets, the KTVs and massage parlors open their doors and Pub Street is dominated by tourists and sex workers. But the girls on these streets are not just sex workers. They are someone's daughter, someone's wife, someone's sister. Wait, are you all students? Yes. Are you students? Yes. Yes, students. You're students? Yes, I'm a student. What do you go to school? What are you studying? English. Oh, you study English. Oh, your English is good. And none of them, as little girls, grew up dreaming one day to work Pub Street. <laughs> 